On today's podcast, uh, we talk about me passing the poll at the Brits. Uh, Chris gets his first correct score on his first three points. And we talk about the bombshell news that the Champions League is changing formation. Hello and welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast. I've uh, got the Notorious with me and uh, Chris Stark. Everyone okay? Really good. And we've got to say a huge well done for your performance at the weekend. Yeah, well... I feel quite proud of myself. You know when you've scored a couple of goals uh, and then you come in like Monday morning, you stroll in. Mm. I, I feel I feel pretty proud of my pod passing. Yeah. Um, so, so just explain to me on that one. So was uh, are you given a auto cue of what to read? Are you are you meant to stick by that? Have you just gone? I was. So this is parked. at the Brit Awards. We should say it was at the Brit Awards Saturday yeah. night. You you weren't there this year, Sid. We need a little pod table next year, I think. I was watching it eagle-eyed. Yeah. And Pete's fired into the WhatsApp group before to say, they've given me a script, (laughs) but watch what I do. Yeah. Yeah, it was basically, yeah, they gave me a script, they gave me an auto cue. Um, But obviously, what was so weird about this, it felt like the Rod Stewart moment where only I knew what I was going to do. And there's lots of people there that probably... Um, was a thought, why is he giving an inspirational speech about people that, that, that will be back stronger next year? <laughs> but obviously people that know the pod know that, you know, exactly what I was doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, bizarrely, I had Rod Stewart's driver who took me to the Brits. Oh, really? How about that? So kind of channeling that same energy. Yeah, you turned up feeling quite like, pumped that? that you needed to do something a yeah, little bit different. Yeah, I just knew there. that I was, it was a call to arms, you know, it was a, it was a passing of the pod on a... I suppose a, a global or national scale. So you managed to tell everyone that uh, they can be back strong. I mean, what was yeah. quite weird about seeing it in the room as well is you're, you know, I was sat on a different table to you, Pete, and you're surrounded by all the artists that are nominated. And obviously, if you listen to this podcast, the phrase back stronger makes sense. But how bizarre it was seeing people's reactions to you telling them that they'll be back stronger next year, even if they don't win. As it and they don't understand the podcast reference. No. It's like, why is Peter Crouch gone deep and meaningful yeah, with my I think music there was, career? There were certain people that um, I did have a few people on on the on Twitter, you know, come out and say, "Why have you turned into a motivational speaker or something?" <laughs> said half these people are new and they've got loads of chances to come back next year. Um, but I wanted to shoehorn back stronger in, and, and that's, a nice, that's a nice thing to say because there are some great mm. people in the candidates there, and they will be back strong next year. Yeah, it's true; it does you know, work. Can't all be Ray. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So no. it was a delicate touch. Yeah. Right? And I obviously got San Marino in as well because I, I did with my wife, with my missus. I was desperate to get San Marino in. Hopefully you, you heard it. Yeah. But yeah, I was. I was um, what about the the get up? So uh, the attire, you know, went for the. A little bit Steve Jobsy. Rin Jobsy. And uh, more so the barnet. Yeah. Yeah, what was that? Good, yeah. that was, I, well, I was a big fan. Were you a big fan? Yeah, I thought yeah. he's gone yeah. for it. He's you, gone. not happy with it. I thought it was a syrup at first. <laughs> oh, no. no, because it doesn't it look, look. It didn't look like your hair. No, like, I was, was like, who's I this? had a haircut. Who's this guy? I had a haircut before, literally before I went on, just on the day. Yeah, and then um, yeah, and he went. Do you, want, do you want to try something different? And he just he styled the it. Ruffled for look. Me. For like a little, yeah, a little bit ruffled. I went ruffled and roll necked. Did you what? hear me shouting roll net? By the way, I had roll net wanker. Mate, I want to do that. I, was. I was actually a bit bad because I had a few beers by then. And obviously, I was excited that you were on the stage to start shouting, roll neck, roll neck. <laughs> like, and then someone around me was like, shh. Because obviously, it's like Dua do, do Lipa's won an award. So mm. she's trying to accept her award and do her speech. And there's me shouting, roll neck up at Peter. <laughs> it was just a bit of a shambles, really. What's it like in the pit, you know, with all them tables? Because it just seems like a massive piss up. Is that, is that yeah, what it is? It's exactly what it was. Yeah, it was, it was, I'll be honest with you. Like, it's my first one I've ever been to. I met Ab a, a couple of times after, afterwards mm. <laughs> for, for some fun um, at the parties and stuff. But the first time I've ever been. But I've got to say, I absolutely really enjoyed it. Mm. I, I enjoyed, you know, it's just can't, like madness. And you meet really kind of some interesting people. And just get have a few beers. It'd be and great Brit feel, Award, wouldn't it? Like yeah, everyone feels like they're let loose a bit. Do you not think with the Euros? I, I was sort of um, actually weirdly. I was at my nephew's football party recently, and uh, in, in fact, the weekend just gone. A day after the Brits on a hangover, like thirty young lads playing football, and then in a little hall afterwards, sort of high on sweets and everything like that. It was it was really bad, a really bad hangover experience, if I'm honest. Mm. Um, at Maidenhead's football ground in the cages there, so that was quite good fun. Um, but the playlist that they had was really good because they were playing football songs, Three Lions, everything like that. And it reminds you that, you know, 
Battle Skinner and the, the Badil Skinner and the Lightning Seeds, I mean, they made that iconic song. They weren't all singers, were they? No. They they just thought of a good idea and linked with the right band. Mm. One eye on the Euro, should we not be in the realms of thinking about what football song we could this time next year, Rodney, we could have a Brit Award. No, yeah, this yeah. is a bit of me. Yeah, yeah. The, the only issue with this is like, it's many have tried and Not failed have tried. miserably. It's it, it can be a bit embarrassing. Like it's very close to being embarrassing. It's it's really cringe if you get it wrong. Fucking imagine we all sit there going, Woo, "We're gonna win the cup." <laughs> right. Everyone go, "Look at these twats." You know what I mean? I would. Mm. I, I, I'm a bit skeptic. Skeptical, you know. Okay, but then do you need to go down the Vindaloo route and just write about something that we like? round about the time of the football and just hope that the two marry up. Do you see what I mean? Well, I mean, I'm looking at this from a positive and I'm thinking if there's ever a chance England are going to win it, it's got to be this yeah. tournament. So that... You think we could be the song? So that that gives me more hope than than the other way. And I'm I'm thinking we can, with the connections that we've got and the ideas, we can brainstorm this, we can make this happen. This is why um, if we get the cow thing moving, you know, I really don't want us to forget about us getting a pod cow. Like this yeah. could be the kind of thing. It could be a song about milking, for example, and that mm. end up being the new Vindaloo, you know? Mm. Yeah, true, okay. A milk a dairy one. A milk a dairy one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's Chumba Wumba, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's Chumba Wumba, yeah. <laughs> um, so, something to think about, but look, we've also got a lot of listeners who are creative and brilliant at what they do. If you can think of a sort of non-cringe way for us to, to make some sort of song, we, we'd be happy to back it. Mm. Yeah. We just need the right idea, don't we? We do. And then hopefully this time next year, Brit Awards. And then we can all be there and celebrate. And... Oh, if I'm not there, I'll be there in spirit. Yeah. I watched it on my own in, in my living room. <laughs> Watching you boys have well, fun. Well, it was good because I, obviously I, I, I texted you boys beforehand, but nobody nobody knew I was going to try and shoot on it. A couple of couple of phrases in there. Yeah. But yeah, enjoyed the whole process. Uh, Love passing the pod and, and hopefully it's... Uh, all right, works. let's go back to the football. So this is the Friday pod. Uh, there's points at stake. I'm not going to explain the rules uh, or how you get the points, um, but it's a league system between me, Sids, Crouchy, uh, forfeit for the loser at the end of this season. Sids, you are currently languishing bottom of the table. Yeah, it was uh, another really disappointing week. I mean, Everton, West Ham... Come on, that, is, that draw written all over it. It was 1-0 in the 91st minute and then West Ham go and score two. It's give you a little bit of a gap. I must admit, when that third goal went in, for the, uh, for the Man City, I was, um, I was fuming. It's a big correct score for me, that That's one. That's a mass monster correct score. Three, like, I needed I that. as well, but you know, obviously Rashford put pay to that early doors. Mm. Some great finishes, by the way. Mm. How good were, were the goals? Foden's class, huh? Yeah, but it's like... played so imagine well. Imagine for me that my score prediction comes in the 90th minute. Yeah. yeah. That just, I mean, just wonderful. Who was it give the ball away? Fucking Amrabat. See up to yeah, Oh, yeah. Like, he was the yeah. one that killed in, in, in all honesty, right? <laughs> Amrabat. I'm blame, oh, I've got to blame him for, for that correct <laughs> score. Was he he's dallying, was It's he? annoying. It's, do you know what? When it comes in, it's, it's fucking annoying, I've got to say. But there we go. Listen... These next fixtures are really, really tough, but we'll come to them in a minute. Yes, yeah, so obviously that correct score was was fantastic from you. I got two scores correct, uh, two points, and you you got, you had the one, just the one. Um, yeah, but that's... again, I think that's I think it's a good standard from us now. I think we are as a podcast on a Friday back stronger. Yeah, definitely mm. feels I think we that way. One, but big time. Yeah, but getting the nailed on score, a mighty three points from that. You know, you're right, Pete. You got a, a, called a couple of the results right. Point point a piece. Mm. Um, they all count, they all add up, but it does mean the gap between top and bottom, me and Sid's 13 to 9, four, four points there. Mm. It's, good, Ooh, it's a good cushion. A nice, it's just a it's nice It's a good cushion knowing that I haven't had a three-pointer in a long time. Yeah. So I'm... Uh, I, I'm still nervy. Like, I know I'm two points ahead of Sid's now, but I'm still, I'm still nervous. Like, one three-pointer at least above me, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> it does make it exciting. Oh this, my god, it? the jeopardy! The WhatsApps over the weekend are fun, aren't they? The jeopardy, mate. Are you on TV again this weekend? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, midweek. Be... Yeah, it's some Champions League Europa action. Yep, but nothing on the weekend. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. So, shall we uh, talk about some of the things that happened last weekend? Then, where would you like to start? Points aside, 
Well, obviously the big game was 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 the Manchester derby. I thought it was a was a great game of football. Uh, Nunes scoring late on. Yeah, do you Liverpool. know what? With that Liverpool one, it just does make Huge you result. think whether it's just going to be their year. You know, it's... it was ni- ninety plus nine. What did you make of obviously the drop ball situation? Wow, that was bad. It's it? bad. It's bad, isn't it? Oh, I mean, because it's because it is the law. It's it's uh, it's the wrong decision. It's not subjective. It is well, what he's done it, is incorrect. It's it's the wrong decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. You know, I know they're got... saying that there's time in between that and the goal, but if that wouldn't have happened. So at the time that we're recording this, because I believe this is all getting sort of appealed properly, isn't it? And because uh, mm. it's not a subjective decision, is it? Mm. As you say, it's just yeah. fact. Yeah. <laughs> so, and what about the chairman coming down on the pitch as well? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was... yeah he, he looked like he, I, did, I felt like he was, he, he came down and went, oh, I shouldn't be, I don't know, you know, <laughs> yeah. one of those ones where I think potentially he's been down there before and been allowed to say what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was trying so hard to keep that together. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was a, a monumental error in the words of Mike Dean. Um, on behalf yeah, of uh, Paul Tini, the referee. But going back to Liverpool, that's massive. Oh, it was absolutely Last huge. Like, minute, the scenes, man. the scenes were unreal, weren't they? Mm. And yeah, I mean, that was a bit, that was a big performance because obviously you, you City going and, and yeah. getting a result there that, you know, they would have gone above them, wouldn't they? Mm. So yeah, huge result. Do you think Liverpool have enough in them? Because it does feel like those other two are, are escalated massively. My, my my thing with with Liverpool is like they, they they've won um, all those games with so many injuries. You know, yeah. it was like I think Klopp said it. You know, won all four of those games. You know, with the Carabao Cup as well, with with injuries to so many key players. You know, they're playing kids. Um, at, you know, Nunes coming back. They've missed Salah. You know, for so long as well. And I know City have missed De Bruyne. Um, you know, but they've, I just feel like there's so many key players that they've managed to cope with. And I think once those once those players all come back. No, that will kick if they if they still manage to kind of nick over the line like yeah. they have been doing, yeah. and then they get those players back, that could put them in the ascendancy. But City City look like they look so good. So I mean, you know, they they they're, they're favourites, um, rightly so as well. Steve, what about Pochettino? Um, bit of an uninspiring result against Brentford. It, it felt like yeah, calls of Poch out. First time sort of, is it really enough? Yeah, it seemed to be emerging. There was yeah. the odd chant of Mourinho, which I don't know if that was a bit sarcastic or if that was. They'll always, they genuine... always chant him, don't they? The Chelsea fans, they always would welcome him back in open arms. I think this is the first time now that we've seen with Chelsea with the fans on Poch's back. Look, when he came through the door, he was always up against it because of the Spurs connection. And then I felt with just his history with working with the youngsters and and making them better and developing good young young players like he done at Southampton like he done at, at Tottenham as well that this was just built up for him mm. um, but it feels like it's a road to nowhere for him I really do feel that and once the fans start yeah, the I, board I, always tend to listen yeah I thought I thought it'd be better for him I, I, I do it's been so disappointing this season so poor, and obviously the news coming out of the uh, you know this doesn't concern any Chelsea fans at all. But the news of the Champions League uh, had a reshake in it. Mm. Uh. <laughs> Trying to get that in for George, our producer. Why? Why you got being like that? <laughs> He's a Chelsea fan. <laughs> Poor boy's suffered quite a bit of late, actually. <laughs> he looks dishevelled over there, doesn't he? <laughs> he'll probably cut that out. <laughs> he probably will cut out, <laughs> and he'll put, put something in that cancels me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd just like to formally take that back actually George and say uh, how well, much why don't we I, was, I was uh, explain this to me then yeah I mean, so what's... obviously this has only just come out now so like we I need to dig down in, and it's find out it's kind of like last hour or yeah something, I need to find really... out exactly you know what the fuck it means but I just think it's a lot of dicking around isn't there with, with formats so they're uh, basically making it into like a league table aren't they a 30, giant league yeah is it 36 teams uh, There's the, still the draw where you, where you play four, you play four games. So yeah, th- yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So you're still seeded as a draw, and you draw, and you play. Uh, was it eight games? And then mm-hmm. the top eight go through automatically. The second Play-off. eight go into a playoffs, and the third eight are elimination. Yeah, so more elimination. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Listen, you know, and then it goes into a knockout stage as per normal. As per but, normal after that. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's quick, isn't it? Like just. 
bang, you announce it, then we're doing yeah. it next year. Yeah. Um, it'd be like, a funny one. Well, I don't know. I was wrong with it before. But um, would this system it? have helped you in the Champions League, do you think? Um, we haven't had time to absorb it, really, have we? No, I just think you knew where you stood with the, you know, play, you draw three teams out, yeah. four teams out, obviously you included, mm. and you know where you're going, you know those games, and you kind of know where you are. It probably seems like there's more jeopardy on it. Probably, I suppose, maybe the thinking is there's a bit more excitement behind it um, there must but be. also more games probably I think there must be I think they're looking at going teams have to go for it because if you get a 1-0 win and you know other teams are getting every two goal counts you know, that's well. it now they're trying to probably make it more end to end more entertaining it's more goals every team rather than yeah. yeah just within your yeah okay we'll see cool uh, this is a little bit of a call to arms I've realised that uh, Ben Foster is a goalkeeper uh, and he's got more subscribers than us um, on YouTube. It's an absolute disgrace, really. We're we're planning on being as big as Mr. Beast. Um, and if you haven't uh, subscribed, then you're a Carl. Uh, and I can't condone that. So please get in touch, hit subscribe, um, and make us as big as Mr. Beast, or at least bigger than Foster. Uh, right, so on to this weekend's football. Some massive games... The thing is with this weekend, I really feel like this is going to be a weekend with the three games that we got where there's going to be so many different predictions, potentially. Because these games, I don't know about you boys, I think are incredibly hard to call. This is the toughest three that we've had to date, in my opinion. Because yeah. they could go either way. Mm. They could, yeah, but I, what I like about that is that we, you, you know, you can go for anything... It's all been it all be respected because they, they could go either way these games. But I think we'll get lots of different scores, which puts more there's more chance for someone to go ahead or get caught or yeah. and I like that. I, I tell you what I like about this as well is people who listen to this podcast and you know, because we're giving three scores each, we do put the scores up on social now, to be fair, if you do want to follow it. But people who are watching the games and kind of the fire into the DMs with a bit of a well done if you get the right result yeah. in that. People are buying into the drama. We haven't worked out what the forfeit is going to be yet, um, but safe to say it'll be worth mm. it. And we also haven't found out what Sid's quote uh, for this week is. Oh, yeah. Obviously, yeah I want to quote this now. Quote we? from every week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> last week's one was. Um, the, their arseholes fell out I yeah. believe yeah. And, and the one before that if Sheffield United score oh, I'm fucked <laughs> yeah, so we're interested to see what the quote well, is this week yeah I mean like what if you're watching this podcast freeze frame on your favourite Steve Sidwell quote mm. on because the, there's obviously the captions underneath and then send us a little picture of it we'd love yeah, that yeah. it always makes <laughs> us get the comment out tickles us, doesn't it alright All right, stay into this which could be the biggest game of season so far uh, this uh, next part of the podcast is supported by Paddy Power and it's their big weekend fixture Ooh. it's Liverpool versus Manchester City wow a I mean, juggernaut of a game I, exactly how are you boys <laughs> in your creative punditry language describing this one because why well, is a juggernaut there is this a title decider well, yeah, it is, isn't it? Uh, Six point up. Yeah, yeah. This, this, <laughs> this for me is, it's not a total decider, but it's, it's, puddings, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not massive as puddings, of course not, but it's up there. Come on, it's build up it up, there. Steve. What, what is this? I think this is going to be colossal. Oh, oh, love it. Uh, especially at Anfield. Um, colossal. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like colossal. Uh, only, only, the reason why I say this is because City are flying at the minute. Mm. You know, they're in the groove, they're scoring, they're winning. But Liverpool at home, they seem to just, they, you know, get it over the line. It's special at Anfield, isn't it? Mm, and and then the big games they they're turn up. They're unbeaten in their 22 games at Anfield. Yeah, well, that, that's what I'm saying. So City are rolling into this as favourites with Paddy Power, right? 13 to 10. 10 pound gets you 23 back. Whereas Liverpool 17 to 10. 10 pound gets you 27 back. Does, like, how many teams are going to Anfield? Well, none. Obviously, yeah. I'll answer the question for you. Yeah. As favourites as the away team. So this is what I mean. You, you know, you have to go by those odds, but it, City would have to be the first team in what would be then, what, 23 matches to, 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 yeah. to break this unbeaten... I, I don't know. I think this is... It's so tricky to just kind of outright say that they can be the favourites in that scenario, especially with 
what you know, Pete, the the Anfield difference there. What a massive game, the atmosphere with this game. Yeah, that's it. I just think I think probably the, the odds wise is, is is the injuries that they've all got at the moment. Mm. I think you know they had, they had everyone fit. I think it would have been probably more even. Um, but, but yeah, Liverpool Anfield with that with it with the kind. I mean, I remember being up there for this this fixture. Do you remember when Sterling scored late on? Yeah. I was in a box. I was in Steve Gerrard's box, actually. And um, it was next door was was Noel Gallagher um, at this game. And it was, the, it was the one, obviously, you know, we know what happened where they, where they lost the league in the end. But that moment where Liverpool beat City that day, it felt like that was the game. It was like, well, oh my God, they're going to do it. And they hadn't won it for so long. Mm. And um, I always remember, like, I was all over it, like, as a fan just watching and it was brilliant and I ended up getting involved right back out when I think it was Raheem Sterling scored and everyone was poured out the box all jumping on each other's backs and I was right in the moment and all that <laughs> and uh, I always remember Noel Gallagher was kind of like hiding behind the glass a little bit and he just poked his head round and said uh, don't be fucking pretending you're a scouser now <laughs> 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 fair play <laughs> Yeah, like, this is this is big. Uh, Van Dyke's obviously massive, isn't he, for Liverpool? Um, up against Erling Haaland, and I've just seen this stat here that Erling Haaland for Man City has now scored against every single side he has faced during his time in the Premier League. I mean, what a what a ticking box that is! It's incredible mm. as a striker, Pete. Yeah. Just absolute madness, really. Like to, to the fact that obviously there's three new teams come up, but like he, he only been here for two years. <laughs> Not even that <laughs> yet. Mad. Not even that. Yeah, it's mad. He's kind of completed it. Completed the Premier League. I mean, what a weird collection he has there. Yeah. And then you're thinking on top of that, if anyone's going to stop him, it could be Van Dyke. Yeah, absolute machine. Having said that, God, he missed some chances didn't he, the other day against mm. United. Ooh. Well, that that the one, from one was two a tap in, wasn't it? Yeah. I think he maybe should have. Could he have headed that? It's a lot easier just to mm. nod it in. Yeah. I don't know if he could have made it with his head. Mm. But yeah, missed some, wow, missed some chances. But then, you know, still got played in and like absolute killer at the end. Yeah. Didn't like, didn't look like it affected him. Well, it did actually. At half time, I could see him going off like fuming with himself. Mm. There's no worse place than missing a sitter in a big game like that. Coming in and having to apologise. I've done it yeah. numerous times yeah. myself. <laughs> but there's nothing worse. And then, you know, the, when you, if you go on and lose those... I remember what, I was actually looking for Haaland's reaction to the goals that Foden scored. And I was thinking, he's going to be absolutely buzzing um, because there's nothing worse than losing a game that you've missed chances in. Mm. Yeah. Do you think the fact that this is at Anfield gives this... Uh... If this, if this was the other way around, if this was at the Etihad at this stage of the season between these two teams with exactly the same teams they got, this might be a different proposition. It may be weighted way more towards Man City. Mm -hmm. I just think that Anfield difference is is potentially huge in this fixture. I, I do. Yeah. I mean, that that factors in my in my scoreline. Yeah, really. I think, Should I, we get to the scores? I think on this, this is, if this is the Etihad, I, I, found, I think City probably... That's do, what I'm saying. My... Yeah. I do think there's something, there is an Anfield factor here. Okay, so what are you going for? Mm. Well, I mean, it'd be easy to sit on the fence, wouldn't it, right? 1-1 uh, is 13-2. to two. Uh, That was the last result that they had here. Uh, 10 against you, 75. But I've gone for Liverpool. I think the Anfield factor is a big factor yeah. in, in this fixture particularly. And I think 2-1. Oh, 2-1. 2-1 Liverpool. 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 What are you going for? I've gone 2 1 City. Have you? Yeah. So I thought that. I thought we'd have a few like. See, so, you know, I'm going to change my mind now. So I did go 2 1 City as well. I might go for a draw. Yeah. Doing 2 all. Just so, again, might, the pod stays alive. I might go 1 1. <laughs> okay. I might go 1 1. Okay. So basically, if Liverpool or Man City win, I'm proper fuck. <laughs> 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 good. There's the quote. <sighs> good, good, good. I was in snatch, wasn't it? Then when the yeah, with the rabbit. Yeah, that's it. We've been proper fuck. Yeah, <laughs> proper fuck. Well, that's good because that means the podcast stays alive, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we're keeping the podcast alive, and yet all those odds are correct at the time of recording. Please gamble responsibly. Mm. Right, next game: Aston Villa Tottenham. Now this is a big game. This is a big game. All for the top four, huh? So yeah, is, Villa, yeah, yeah. Villa are fourth at the moment. Yes. Villa, uh, Spurs are fifth. Really tight. Uh, five points yeah. difference. Villa are flying. 
Yeah. They had a bit of a stumble at home in recent weeks, but back on term, uh, back on winning ways. Ollie Watkins, how good is he doing? The second highest top goal scorer in the Premier League this season behind Haaland, mm. ahead of Salah. Yeah. Obviously, some injuries. Yeah. That, but that is incredible. Yeah, he's... He's flying. I loved his interview the other day. He said that he was going to games knowing that he was going to score. Yeah. How good is that for a, for yeah, a striker? Nothing crouching. when you're in that kind Not of... Not hoping, knowing, knowing that he's going to score. Yeah, no, it's absolutely, absolutely incredible. Like, and he is and he is on the plane. There's no question of that. But he is, I think, in the seat for... Um, Harry King gets injury. He's, he's next in line. Has to be. You'd think so. It's a good way, isn't it? Because if... We've been... We've probably, in recent years, we've always relied on our main striker. Whereas now... With Kane, if he does get injured, and he comes, he brings something different, doesn't he? Yeah, there's, there's, there's yeah. a different way well, to. He's so different, the kind of player. You know, Ivan Tony, I love as well, but yeah. um, you know, I think I think Watkins gives you something completely different, kind of a different thing to think about. If you want someone, maybe you know, maybe more similar to Kane, yeah. then then Tony Tony but goes. Do you feel that with this current England team, because you start to see the sort of drafts? teams as people see it roughly at the moment obviously opinion subjective that kind of thing do you think we're in a position which maybe England fans haven't really had for a long time where it doesn't feel like you lose one player and you're fucked sort of thing there is multiple options yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it's so fair very, to say very true that yeah 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 like when I came in for Rooney you no I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that at all Pete. I'm not saying that <laughs> no I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm just saying we got we, we do oh, seem to have good options in every position and different systems no, 100%, which, yeah we're, we're a different animal now the way we're playing but anyway we got away from uh, what we're trying to do here yeah. and that's yeah, Villa, Villa versus Spurs. Tottenham yeah so Madison back for Spurs yeah. uh, which is a massive boost Timo Werner always you know getting in the mix with the chances, missed a lot. He's a but threat. it's kind of the story of his, well, his well, previous same. experiences and then seems to be yeah, same gosh, here. It's kind of a little frustrating to watch. so much pace. He's like, like, and he, he gets in there all the time. And like, he had another one-on-one, -on -one, but you just... You, should, you don't you know, fancy him, do you? Kane, That's the... Kane goes through that position. You've seen it so many times and you're like, you just know he's finishing it. Mm. Whereas with him, I just kind of knew that... There was one on the weekend where... They Spurs broke down the right hand side. Madison was in the middle. Timo Werner was on the left, and you could see Madison going to Timo Werner. Get in the box. Get in the box. The ball flashed across, and if if he'd have been there, mm. he would have scored. Yeah. And Madison looked straight at him as if to say, like, "I can see that mm. build up. Why are you not, well, not doing?" Yeah, do, yeah. Do you but think then again, for his goal, his movement was really, really good. You yeah, know, like obviously strange. Brennan Johnson down the right hand side, and his movement was 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 good. It was good movement. So like he's frustrating because it's there, but you just at times he, he can frustrate. Do you, but... do you think there's an added spotlight on him and that because of his previous experience yeah, in a way that you probably wouldn't have if he'd just come in this season without without that? It's an unbelievable threat. You know what I mean? When you've yeah. got pace like that, he's always going to be a threat, and he's he's always worth his place in the team. And um, but yeah, for this for this game, um, tough ones are cool. This it is it is With, when you have got pace like that as well, especially away at Villa Park. Um, they're going to need that on the break, I think, mm -hmm. at times. Scores? Some interesting one. Uh, uh, I was really tor torn on this one, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go Villa. I'm gonna go Villa for the win, uh, and I think they're gonna win two one. That's my right. prediction. I wrote down two one Villa as well. Have you? I've gone two all. Okay. Desmond, I've gone for the Desmond. Interesting. The two two. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all yeah, right, there okay. could be goals. Uh, okay, well, I'm sticking. I hope it don't come in. That's such Can a good one for me. It's such a good minute. one for me that you both. When you both do the same, I like it a little bit. Yeah, but also imagine, imagine if it is two one, and then like the last minute, like the jubilance if they score oh, two two. Oh. Yeah, because if it gets to two one, everything you, off us and go so right. That, that would be so sweet for me. Mm. Can you imagine that? Like you two both on three points, and I come in that'd 90 be, minute. Uh, that'd be very. TV remote would go through the TV. Yeah, shit, yeah, well, that's yeah. gonna be so fun. I could see that happening. Mm. <laughs> All right, um, Crystal Palace versus Luton. Big game. Hard one to call again oh, for different reasons. Mm. Is that Palace? Luton are giving it a go, aren't they? They every give it a go game, every, every game. game. I enjoy watching them. I enjoy watching them because they just give it everything. And they, they score goals. Go. Yeah, they they are obviously the, the the three promoted sides look like they are going down. You'd think. I think Burnley, Sheffield United look like they've gone. Um, but Luton are the only one I feel that can 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 give it. Well, they're giving it a go, like you yeah. say. Yeah, but I don't think they can do it, mate. They've got this sort of cup final mentality to every single game this season. Yeah. Like, Brilliant. pains me to say it for obvious. 
Watford fan reasons, but I do find them exciting to watch. And it does feel that they can be 2-0 down, 3-0 down at half time, and you would never rule them out, mm. which is crazy to say about a team that's just been promoted, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at this and I would have said that probably Luton would have been favourites before Oliver Glasner has gone in as the Palace manager because it was a little bit subdued, a bit dour at Sellers Park recently. But that turn of a manager sometimes just gives... Well, there's a, there has been a lift. There's a 3-0 they won, didn't they, in his first game. They went ahead uh, against Spurs, mm. but they got... Beat. He, he would. He would. But it seems different there. Okay, with new manager, it would be the first manager to win the first two home games on the bounce mm. from starting uh, since yeah. Alan Pardew in 2015. Mm. Abby Clancy's just arrived. You're yeah. right. She's um, coming to clean. Yeah, I, I, I draft her in uh, before every Friday podcast just to just to spruce the place up a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay, boys, what are we saying then? Uh, I, I find this one. such a hard one to call. Tough one to call, yeah. Uh, Palace are without Elise, Gay and Decore, big players for them. Um, mm. I, still, I still think new manager bounce. Uh, I know they struggled against Spurs uh, towards the end. I thought they played, they played reasonably well, but they, towards the end they struggled. Um, I have gone for a Palace win. What have you gone for? 2-0. Do you, you don't think Luton will score a goal? You see, they, they score. They score in every game. Yeah, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, I just. I, I feel like they. Um, Palace will, will be reasonably comfortable. They will crush them. <laughs> they will. I don't know about that. I, don't know about that. I like. What, I like what Luton are doing. I love watching them as well. But I, yeah. I've gone. I've gone Palace too. All right. What have you gone for? Luton Chris? two now. Wow. <gasps> I know. Which is How have you backed horrible Luton? on the captions? <laughs> How um, has he backed Luton? Begrudgingly, I'm not. I'm not backing them. I'm thinking of everything, how it comes out in the writing on this podcast. I'm not backing them. I'd rather not do this. You're backing them. So we shows you how much you want it. Luton 2. <laughs> Crystal Palace this is now. New, this is wow. new Chris don't, Stark. Put, don't make us predict on teams. Wow. I mean, we should have a veto on what teams we... Chris Stark. I, I, d d there is something to be said here for the fact that why, why do we have to do a Luton uh, prediction? Um, I didn't... I didn't ask for the for you the know, games it's not, it's not particularly um, fair well but I do think they'll win yeah okay I mean I think this is going to be another tight one I was going to go 1-0 Palace but then what scared me was if Luton score it fucks everything they always you want some interest at uh, all yeah, times yeah. Oh, shit, I was about to say they always score and you don't want that as no, well. no, so I've gone 2-1 to Palace okay 2-1 to Palace yeah, two so you're both back in Palace yes you're both together on the other... Did you say 2-0 and 2-1? I said 2-0 to Palace, yeah. Oh, guys. And you got 2-0 Luton. 2-0 Luton. Mm. Well, listen, you know what? If it's, if there's a goal from the other one, we are fucked. <laughs> yeah, you know, at least he's got a bit of interest. I see what he's doing there. He's trying to stay alive for the whole game. Sid, this could move you into double figures finally in the points. That'd be nice. That'd be a, a milestone. I've got to say, I've, I've lost all confidence. I've, oh, I've, I'm, I'm sorry I'm to hear that. Uh, yeah, I've gone. Place at the I've moment, gone. Isn't he? You've been here before, though. So I've, I've, I've chumbo on, but I'll come back stronger. Hundred yeah. percent, I will. I will. So he's got time. He's run. Yeah, correctly. Yeah, I yeah, guarantee yeah. I don't finish at the bottom. Oh, you, Timo Werner, are you? Well, mm. there's a big forfeit for a person who does. So we'll we'll wait and see. It won't be me. All right, I got a message here also from Jordan. He said, had a random thought, considering Crouchy does a lot of TMT games, what are the odds we set him a task having to collect one shirt from a player at each match that he does with the hope of getting one from each team per season or something like that? Could be funny if he tries to arrange it with a player during the warm up before the match so it's caught on the cover. That's a great idea. So, this is a bit of a genius one because obviously he watches the build up because you are on the pitch. There's sometimes mm. in that build up where you actually are in the middle of that pitch doing mm. some interviews right in the middle, yeah. as the players are around you. So, imagine if you were to just pull one and go, can I have a shirt after? It's such a good idea. This is from Jordan, by the way. Thanks, Jordan. I really like the idea of watching you after a game running around trying to get a player's shirt like another player. And like right after the, after the after game. So if I'm on the pitch, so what I was thinking as well, what if we swapped shirts? So like <laughs> I took my uh, big coat off and gave it to him yeah. and swapped it for a shirt. That's nice. It's just the the idea that it will all just be players sort of doing that. <laughs> what, and me? And you know how they cut between <laughs> the players at the end of the game and the manager and you just see you in the background sort of but shaking you know, hands and doing you know the when shirt. They, um, when they do do that bit, uh, obviously we're talking over the pitches usually yeah you know so they'll the game will finish and then 
the commentary team will hand straight back to us, but we'll be on the side of the pitch, but we'll be talking over the pitch as you see. It's like obviously a fantastic result here today, so and so. But it, would it be funny that I'll be doing that whilst in vision? <laughs> <laughs> Shaking players' hands. Yeah, I think uh, honestly, I think it's a really nice I think, I think, idea. I don't, I don't think it's achievable maybe every game, but I think it's probably you're not going to do I it. Think, I think I think I can't do it every game, but no, I, no, I, I, think I, think I could probably get a shirt at the end of a game. I think it's a challenge for a, the season. It's, it's a challenge. Get us one shirt from yeah, the game. I'll get you a shirt, All right. and hopefully that'll be caught on camera. Uh, we've got a picture someone sent in of a, a shirt they want us to be aware of. This is from Ashley. Uh, he says, boys, want to know what your thoughts are on the type of shirt below spotted at the Carabao Cup final. And what it is, is a blue shirt. So I'm assuming Chelsea from that. But it think... doesn't really look like a Chelsea that shirt. It doesn't look like a Chelsea shirt. That's, that, that's what threw But it was going to be blue or red it's that not. game. Yeah. But a text here says, Ashley wants to know the lad's thoughts on the type of shirt below spotted at the Carabao Cup final. But then put in brackets, he's not a fan. The issue is what is written on the back of it. Well, it's like he knows that if he is a Chelsea fan, it looks like that he knows they're losing. Because <laughs> he's just gone, I'm going to enjoy the day. It's Wembley 2024. Yeah. <laughs> he's basically got a blue shirt with Wembley 2024 on the back. It's literally like he's going, I'm going to have a great day, we're going to lose, and then I'm going to come home. In a way, this is a bit of genius thinking because you know them scarves that you get that are done on the day with the date and the teams? He's done that at the beginning of the season. On the back of this jersey, gone... This is my attire for for that that day. For that day, and we don't know. We know what shirt this is. This could be. I mean, it could be anyone. Wigan. It's blue. Quite, Who plays in blue? It's not. It's not. I can't get my head around this because it's not. It doesn't. It's not a Chelsea shirt. No. No, but is it's it, a isn't, really old Chelsea. Yeah, but shirt. isn't it just one of those? You know, when you get to a cup final, you can buy all these sorts of t-shirts and things that's just celebrating the final. My my issue is having. The, it looks like he's a fan of Wembley Stadium. It's like he's so, <laughs> that is and so I've true. never seen it where so like true. you go as you go to support the teams, mm. one of two teams, or you're walking up <laughs> Wembley Way as a fan of the stadium. <laughs> what, to be fair, he does look like a stadium spotter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, like the train guys. Like he's gone like he's got a bag in his hand. But... Yeah, yeah, he like looks, a plastic bag. He go. He he's. In his element, he's walking around the stadium. That's he couldn't give a shit about the football. Mm. He's there to enjoy that lovely stadium. And I think just even from this still shot, you can see that he's walking there with a swagger. He's looking around like at the building, literally yeah. going, "Oh, yeah, <laughs> what a great building!" <laughs> he's just he's just wandering around, and he's sort of I don't know, sniffing the walls and that kind of thing. Like, yeah, just, yeah I'm, I'm sure he is. He's just, he's just like you know, let you say. Sniffing seats, but each to their own. And yeah. um, uh, he's a fan of this stadium, which is it's great to see. It's a lovely stadium. You know what? At the end of the day, he goes there and he's a winner. Yeah, exactly. Whereas exactly. so two teams are competing for it. Whereas if you just enjoy the stadium, you're always going to win, aren't you? True. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's exactly it. So you go, Wembley man. <laughs> <laughs> wonder if you enjoyed your announcements on Wembley Way I hope so <laughs> I really do <laughs> it looks like you might <laughs> alright then so all to play for Looking this weekend forward to it this weekend some big games and uh, enjoy them but enjoy them responsibly 